How does my four wheel drive work and what do all these buttons do on the Rubicon? In today's video, I wanna talk about all the features and possible features that your Wrangler or Gladiator might have in the four wheel drive system. How can I use this system? When do I use it? What does this button do? I wanna try and go over all the things that are involved with the four wheel drive system, how to use some of them properly, as well as just show you how some of them work. If you just have a regular transfer case and four wheel drive, we're gonna talk about that as well. So guys, we're gonna start off in the Jeep and look at this knob right here to the left of your shifter. Now, of course we do have an automatic in here. This could be next to your manual, but every single Wrangler and Glide Eater has this knob. They're all four wheel drive and at least they have this knob here that can get you into four wheel drive. It might have a four auto on here, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. This is the base transfer case. So looking at this, you do have four different modes on here. You've got two high, four high, neutral and four wheel drive low range. Now all of these are different. So they all do a different thing to the vehicle and they provide power to either two or four wheels. Now when looking at this, you can see the pattern and exactly where you need to go to get into the modes. Being that this is a Jeep, it is shift on the fly from two high to four high and then from four high back to two high. And I normally do that below 20 miles an hour. Two wheel drive high is great for daily driving. Even in rainy or slippery conditions, it is gonna do great for you because of the ABS and full traction control. Four wheel drive high, I only recommend going up to about 35 or 40 miles an hour, and that's best in deep snow or in off-road conditions. So if you've got deep snow, it's it's really thick, it's deep, or you just don't wanna lose traction at all, four-wheel drive high is gonna be great because you can still leave the traction control on in the entire system. Now, neutral here, this one is very, very important. So neutral puts the entire transfer case in neutral, meaning there is no power going to either drive shaft or either axle. That is very important if you're trying to either flat tow the vehicle or you just don't want any power going to the transfer case at all or the axles. Maybe something's going on and you just want that to be safe and secure. For low, that's where the Jeep Wrangler comes into the biggest player in the market. So for low basically reduces the gear reduction of your vehicle to almost a maximum speed of about 15 to 20 miles an hour. What four wheel drive low does in my particular transfer case, which is a four to one, is increase the amount of times the transfer case is spinning by four, which gives you a lot faster of a revolution, but a lot lower capable speed. This is about good to about 15 to 20 miles an hour. I would say 20 is way maxing out on this. And what this allows you to do is give the maximum torque and power to your wheels and get those RPMs up higher to really get the RPM, the power built up, and then it put to the ground. Four wheel drive low is really needed in if you're pulling someone out, severe off-road conditions, or if you're very stuck and you don't need a lot of wheel speed, but you want a lot of wheel torque, four wheel drive low is gonna be your solution. So that was the basic transfer case explained. Now I know a lot of you have ordered the select track transfer case which comes with a four auto and four high part-time selection it gives you five selections instead of four on the standard transfer case i will tell you basically the same rules apply but when it comes to the four high auto versus the four high part-time the four-wheel drive automatic is going to be used in regular driving you can take that up to higher speeds and the front differential will be engaged but it will only send power when it notices slippage so this is great if you've got someone that's kind of unfamiliar with a four-wheel drive system or if you are more used to a system that kind of connects and locks in without you having to do anything. The four high auto is always on in the 392 and it is a great option if you do pick that on a regular Wrangler. Now the difference between the four high auto and the four high part-time, four high part-time acts like almost a standard four high. So that's gonna be used for off-road only or at lower speeds. You're not gonna wanna max that out to 70 miles an hour because let's be honest, it cannot take it. It is giving full power to the front differential, meaning those tires are spinning at the same speed as the rear. So you definitely don't wanna go as fast in that mode and that is why four high auto is going to be your solution. So here's a big trick for you guys to take with you. I know a lot of people are confused. If your Jeep ever needs to be flat towed or if you cannot get this lever to shift for some reason it's stuck, there's a little flap right here. So there's a little plate. I actually just popped it off. It sits like this. If you get a flathead screwdriver in there, you can unclip it, set this to the side, and then inside here, I'll try and pull it up. This orange lever, if you pull on this, this will activate your transfer case into neutral. So you'll be able to flat tow it. You'll be able to get it in neutral. If you can't get that lever for whatever reason, here's a great tip for you. Now I might get these years messed up, but I believe if you've got a 2020 and newer Gladiator that's either a Rubicon or a Mojave and a 2021 or newer Wrangler that's a Rubicon, you've got these cool buttons to the left of your auxiliaries if you have them. You've got the front and rear locker, and then you have this really cool one that's off-road 
Plus. Now you guys know if you have a 392, this can get even more fun. So on that off-road plus button, that's able to set a lot of different features without having to put it into four low. The biggest thing that this does is change the transmission timing as well as the throttle response. So it's almost like putting it in tow mode if you're familiar with having a truck and it really makes it peppy. I can say I used off-road plus and four high on the beach and it was fun to get up a little bit of speed. I can only imagine with the 392. So first let's shift this into four high flashing on the dash. Okay, we're locked into four-wheel drive high. Now we're gonna press the off-road plus button. As you can see, instantaneously, well, instantaneously in a few seconds, this is gonna pop up with the off-road pages. And then over here on the dash, you can see to the left in that center screen, off-road plus, and then it will also disable your traction control at the same time. So it's doing all of this right away and you don't need to touch anything. Now, from what I'm told, I haven't tried it yet, but I believe you can lock the rear locker in the off-road plus. So let's give it a try. Looks like you can't in four high. So it looks like the rear only locker won't allow me to do that in four high. However, you can disconnect the sway bar. So sway bar is flashing, it's flashing on my screen and it's going to disconnect here any minute. It says sensors in it that lets it know if it's off balance and how it needs to disconnect. So maybe we'll try and pull forward a little bit and it might do it. There it goes, I heard the click. So we're in four wheel drive high, off-road plus with the sway bars disconnected and we are just in a <laughs> local little park. So we're just gonna take a spin around the park but I can tell you right away, even when I did it on the beach, the transmission tuning and the throttle response does feel very impressive. So not good to do this on the pavement but oh well. Yeah, so that was just a little bit of gas. You can really feel the throttle response does increase in the off-road plus mode. But that's how that works. Now you can also do this in four low as well. In four low, you still have the ability to disconnect both of the axles too. So you can not disconnect the axles, you can lock both of the axles too. So it's pretty cool because it still changes that transmission tuning, makes it a little bit feel more responsive, but then also just give you all the off-road plus pages up and pull up everything without having to do anything manually. You just press one button. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. That was an overall explanation of the four wheel drive systems that you have in your vehicle, as well as that off-road plus button if you're so fortunate enough to have it. I felt like there was not really a good video out there that explained all of this. And I hope that wasn't too much technical and didn't leave you with any other questions afterwards. The one thing I will mention is that these Jeeps are extremely capable vehicles, but that is no replacement for the fact that you don't wanna drive them like crazy in the snow and the ice and the real slick stuff. They are not invincible, but you just wanna be careful. You know, four wheel drive can get you out a lot of bad situations but overall it's not the end all be all these jeeps are extremely capable for what they're built for and i gotta say i feel safer driving one of these than i do with pretty much any other vehicle they're excellent off-road and they're excellent on road when you're just driving around now if you guys like this style of video and have any other ideas on some comparisons or maybe just a deeper explanation of things let me know in the comments whether it's engines transmissions axles lift kits factory versus extreme recon let me know in the comments because i would love to do that and help you out if you like this style of video give me a like and drop a comment we love doing this kind of stuff and i absolutely love hearing the feedback from you guys till next time though i am matt with dirt road cred get out there and earn yours